Hey, what's up guys? Did you know that Firebase recently came out with their own MCP server? So I thought in this video, we could take a look. This is their MCP server. They give some documentation on how to set things up. They note that you need to log in before you do so. So I've, a I've actually already done that. And then they give some, some guidance on how to set things up in various clients. So for full disclosure, full transparency, I actually tried to do this originally in Claude and it didn't work for me. I don't know if there's something wrong with my installation of Claude or if there's a problem with this MCP server specifically, or I don't know. Um, I didn't try any of the others really just because I don't have any of these easily set up. Um, however, I do have, uh, I've been using this uh, AI assistant UI uh, React library which gives you a UI very similar to ChatGPT. So I've been using this, it's open source. They do have a paid thing, but it's open source. And then I've also been using uh, Vercel's AI SDK, which is kind of comparable to Firebase's GenKit. So I think I'm gonna be making courses on both of these coming soon, more information on that. And with the courses will also come some free videos as well. So I'm gonna show you how I've got that all configured in a second here, but I also wanna call down below some optional configurations, which we are gonna talk about in a second. And then as well, they list all of the capabilities, which are quite a lot, actually. There are a number of things here uh, that really can help you kind of use this in your Firebase projects, which I think is great. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And I'm going to show you why in a second. So the first thing that we're going to do here, I'm going to walk you guys through what I've set up. So I used this thing here, this assistant UI. If we go to docs, I use the template that they provide. So just run this uh, in your terminal and it'll just create a new Next.js application for you. Basically, then you can just run that. You just need to provide the... Um, like the API keys to whatever models you want to use in your .env uh, the file. And then you can run it and you get something like this. And so what I want to do is let's go ahead and we'll just run this real quick since I had stopped it. So we'll just restart that. Note here that compared to what they actually have in this basic configuration here, I've added an additional directory thing here, right? So this is to my dev cafe app website, um, which I haven't really been doing anything with, but it's still there. And so we're gonna use it for this. Uh, and you do have to provide an absolute path if you're not using the current project that you're in. So it, it will just default to your current directory um, or you can specify the actual directory that you want. More on that later on. Then from there, we get the messages from the request. And this is where the magic happens with you, uh, AI SDK. Basically, we determine which model we want. It automatically pulls in the, uh, the API key from, uh, from my environment variables. I give it a system uh, prompt here. This is just for the tool calling. And then we take the tools from here and uh, we make them available to our agent, right? What's the active project right now? Let's see what it comes back with. Hopefully this does work, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so we get this, the active project is Dev Cafe Prod, which makes sense because uh, that's, that's what I had put in here. What data is in Firestore. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. So it's going to list the Firestore collections. Let's go to prod. Let's go and look at Firestore database. And this is correct. We have accounts, we have sessions, and we have users. Okay, great. So, so far, so good. Accounts, sessions, and users. Show me the first 10 docs in the users collection. Let's try this. So that didn't work. Don't know why. It didn't even call a tool, it looks like. So we see use tool. That didn't actually do anything. But it kind of looks like it did because Firestore query collection. So 
I can see that the limit was correctly set, but it didn't actually do anything. Let's say that we go back here and I remove this, this being the, the directory flag here. I'll restart this, I'll do this again. And I would like to just, we're just gonna refresh the page here, okay? And, um, and then we're gonna ask and say, I think the first thing I said before is, is there an active project? So let's do get that again. Is there, oh, sorry. What is the active project? Let's see what it says. Okay, so I removed this away and it must have actually persisted the active project to somewhere, to, to the session. When I was doing this before, it didn't work and it was telling me that there wasn't an active project. So let's see if we can look into which projects we have access to because if you recall, we logged into our Firebase account at the beginning of this. I didn't show you that because I had already done it, but according to their docs here, um, you do have to do this, right? It does say log in right here, right? So once you've done that, it will then have access to everything. So if I do this, let's see what projects do I have access to? So here's all the projects that I have access to. Let's take this one here and let's do set to be the active project. Okay, fantastic. Uh, what is, let's see if this works because when I was doing this before, it wasn't working. It was telling me that it didn't persist. It did work, great. Now if I refresh this, what is the active project? It did work. Very interesting. When I was doing this before and preparing for this YouTube video and trying this out, it would consistently tell me that it wasn't able to save that active project to the environment. It would say that it wasn't persisted. So I guess that's like kind of part of using AI agents is that just like people don't always do things the same way and some are more reliable than others. Like sometimes they're having a good day and sometimes they're having a bad day. It's not like coding where, you know, you it's like deterministic, right? Where like you do it once and it happens the same way every single time, given that the variables don't change too drastically or given that you've thought through all of the edge cases. So I honestly don't know exactly how that happened or why that changed, but it looks like it works now. So that's good. Weird that that did that. I, I honestly don't know. And I really wish that I had been recording before when I was experimenting with this because it would be great to actually show you what I was experiencing. In any case though, I have a diagram that I want to walk you through kind of showing um, how to think about creating an agent that integrates with the Firebase MCP server. So the first way is uh, what I actually wanted to do, which appears as though we could now do this. So basically, if you were to have a single dev agent, so you, excuse me, you create your own agent. And then let's say you have three Firebase projects that you have access to, you can have that dev agent talk to each one of those projects. So a single dev agent, maybe there's a service out there, maybe, maybe I'll create a service out there that can act as a, um, uh, a what, what would you call it? Like a, a, a dev assistant, like an entry level, like, I don't know, like an a, a entry level coder, like a dev assistant or I don't know, something like that and it can integrate with each of your projects and talk to them. That's kind of how I wanted it to work. And based on what we saw here, it seems as though that might actually be possible. However, before I would come in here, I wouldn't set the dev, the, uh, the directory thing here, right? So I would come over here and I would say, what projects do I have access to? And it would list the projects that I have access to. And I would say set, let's say, um, let's use this one here. So it goes and it updates the environment, very, or the environment. And now I wanna say, what is the active project? Now here it's working as we saw before, 
But what I was experiencing before is that this would say there is no active project set. And then when I asked why, it would say because it wasn't able to be persisted due to how the server works. The server needs there to be something specified in a Firebase.json file, which I don't have because I'm not in a Firebase project right now. Um, that means that this is what we would have had to do where you create a separate assistant for each Firebase project that you have that's able to help you with that Firebase project. However, again, it now seems as though all of a sudden this is possible. So I think that this has some really cool potential, um, especially if you can get it to work in Claude, that would be super helpful. Uh, I couldn't, unfortunately, it gave me an error. Um, but yeah, I think this can be super helpful if you wanna be able to have like a little dev assistant that can help you out with stuff. If you do run into that problem though, then you're kind of in this case where you need to have, not that one, this one, where you have to have a different assistant agent for every single project that you have. In any case though, I think that here, the Firebase MCP server is really cool that they actually came out with their own official one. And I look forward to using this in all of my projects or any of them that use uh, Firebase where I think it could be useful. So I thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna support my channel, check out the links in the description below and subscribe and comment, like all that stuff as always. I'm gonna have uh, a, a prompt engineering course coming out soon and also some videos on prompt engineering as well as a uh, this, this AI SDK thing and this assistant UI and I think also Firebase's gen kit. That's kind of what I have on my radar right now. So subscribe if you're interested in those types of videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.